Agricultural Bank of Namibia's Agri-Advisory Services Division offers training to farmers and bank clients in various farming enterprises in all 14 regions of Namibia through face-to-face -face sessions. The AgriLearn online platform will share production content on various agriculture farming enterprises to build the knowledge of farmers from all walks of life. Join us as we embark on this virtual journey towards sustainable farming as we zoom into the basics of rangeland management. Good day, farmers. My name is Erastus Garuga. I'm the technical advisor for livestock and rangeland management uh, for AgriBank uh, in the division known as Agri Advisory Services. So today we are going to discuss about carrying capacity. So we are going to define carrying capacity and also I will show you how you can uh, estimate it. So by definition, carrying capacity is the ability of an area uh, to carry a specified number of animals over a specified period of time. So you can see everything here is quantified. You need to have that area size and you need to also estimate the yield in that area. And again, also estimate the forage requirements or the grass needed by your cattle, for example. And then also you need to have a, a graceable uh, period uh, for your livestock. All right, so carrying capacity is a systematic uh, method that you estimate. And it's not a thumb suck, but it's an actual activity that you do out in your grazing area. So there are some tools that you will be using or that you need to use to determine your carrying capacity. Uh, the simplest and the oldest method is by using these quadrats. So it's a square meter frame, one, one meter by one meter square frame that you can use. So you can even make your own at the farm by welding these rods together or even using uh, uh, wires just to have that uh, square frame. All right, so these are the sampling tools that you will be using to estimate the yield in your camp. So now, uh, when you are estimating this carrying capacity, there are certain things that you need to consider. Uh, you need to avoid areas maybe around the water point, you need to avoid roads. So you actually have to go to where the actual grazing activities are happening. Okay, and it's systematic. Uh, you have to establish a transect line uh, across your camp and then you also determine the distance or the pacing you are making along that transect so that you are at least systematic, that at least every five meter or 10 meters, you are dropping your transect and then you cut the grass uh, from this uh, square frame, put them in the back, these leg bags, the normal leg bags, and then you uh, weigh them and estimate the yield in that particular camp. So you only do it on a dry matter basis. So you don't cut wet grass, or otherwise if you cut wet grass, you need to dry it, all right? So we only estimate based on the dry matter basis because you also need to estimate the forage demand from your livestock based on the 3% body weight uh, uh, forage need. So it's estimated that every animal, can be your cattle or your sheep, will need at least 3% of their body weight in dry matter. Uh, for them to satisfy their daily needs. All right, so how do you uh, do this transect and uh, dropping your quadrat? Uh, you have to walk along a straight line across your camp, and then where you are going to drop this one should be right in front of your shoe, in the middle of your, uh, in the middle, and then you drop and you only cut grass. So you only cut standing grass, you don't collect things that are, that are broken. So you cut the grass using this, this shear and you only cut standing grass. And you only cut grass, not other materials because you want to estimate, for example, you have cattle, you would want to know how much grass would your cattle have available in this particular camp. So not other materials, otherwise you would be uh, overestimating as well. All right, so you only cut grass and you cut to the bottom, almost to the bottom and put them in the back. So you just clean up the whole area, the whole, you cut all the grasses in the square frame. So it's like an animal is grazing. So you just graze to the bottom, put all the grass here, only standing grass, not dead materials, because you need to estimate the yield. So and the yield is whatever is standing in that particular camp. So you cut it all, 
to cut standing grass. And this is dry grass. So it's always better to do, to estimate your carrying capacity twice in a year. So you do it, uh, let's say at the end of, of the rainy season, so that you are able to estimate the maximum yield of your camp. And then again, do it uh, towards the end, let's say this time around, just to estimate what is left from the maximum that you have estimated. So that at least now you play around with your livestock numbers. So they will differ. In the peak season, you have more stocking, uh, stocking rate, whereas this time around, you have uh, less stocking rate or you'll be having more rotations than in the other season. Okay, so you cut everything, just grass. Anything that is inside here, all the grasses that are standing or that are rooted within the, the square frame, nothing outside. So you, uh, on average, you can cut about, or you can drop about 40 quadrats. Can be 10 in one camp, 10 in another camp, and then you make it 40 for the whole farm. Yeah, for as long as you are able to, to estimate uh, or an average for the whole farm. All right, so the paces will differ. The more homogeneous and dense your vegetation or your grass, uh, your grass uh, population, uh, maybe the, the more or the longer the, the pacing between or the distance between. But when it's a bit sparse and also heterogeneous, I think you can do more uh, uh, shorter pacing between or shorter distances between the quadrats. Okay, so yeah, this is how you do it. So it's nothing difficult. Once you cut, you take your grass, you, have, you should have a weigh scale as well. And then you weigh this dry matter grass. First, you have to determine the weight of the bag for you to have the actual weight of the grass only. So then you do a mathematical calculations to estimate the yield for all the total 40 uh, quadrats, which will also give you the yield per hectare, the yield for that camp, and then you can average uh, the whole camp. And then now you determine the dry matter requirement or the forage demand for your animals. And then it will give you the number of animals you can stock in this particular camp. Okay, so that's how you play around with your rotations or the destocking and so forth. After you have dropped your quadrat, so this is how you cut. You cut only rooted grass, standing grass. Don't collect moribund materials. Otherwise, you will be overestimating. So you just only cut grass as low as possible. And the number of quadrats we said is 40. And then the distance between the quadrats along your transect line will be determined by the, the density and homogeneity of your grass population. But then your transect line could be 50 meters or 100 meters but then it will also depend on the, the size of the camp of the area or the area so you, you can have more transect line if the area is, is very big so that you have more representation of the yield okay so remember the denser and homogeneous your area is for your grass population is the closer the distances or the shorter the sorry not the the longer the distances between your quadrats, but the more heterogeneous or when your grass population is sparsely populated, and there's uh, a lot of changes, you would want to capture any small change along that transect, so you reduce your distances between your quadrats. All right, along any transect that you decide, whether it's 50 meters across your camp, and also whether you can put one one or two or three uh, transect lines along your or across your camp depending on the size of the area <clears throat> so you try to to make your estimates to be as close as possible to reality so and it's very important to collect all the other information like the grass species composition the grass cover the grass density the bush de uh, bush density so that at least you have a complete set of information that can influence your decision making when it comes to stocking that particular camp. And always after stocking it, you also need to monitor it, looking at uh, how did the animals utilize it, 
Were they very selective? Did they graze the bulk of it, of the grasses? And then you can make your decision based on that. And remember, you always have to graze the, your area for a shorter period, but rest it for a longer period to allow maximum or optimal recovery of your grasses. That's it for now. Join us next time for more valuable insight. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to avoid missing out on new content. Also, follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram pages for more content.